penalized. So in a way, she lived her life in a bit of a cocoon. And I think we can all identify with the cocoon for the last several months with this COVID thing. We haven't been able to spread our wings ourselves. Soon, if I bet, we'll be able to do so again. But Julia is spreading her wings right now. She's totally free of that physical restraints that she had. There's no more, no more difficulty breathing. There's no pain anywhere. There's no nausea, no vomiting. That's all past. She's free. She's pursuing further interests, and yet she's here. And I'm, I am sure she's there and listening to every word that we're saying. And she is blown away by the aggregate of love that she feels from the people assembled here. I think she's very surprised. I don't think she would have thought she'd touch this many people that felt this way. No, she's blown away by it, as am I. And again, my heart goes out to the family who organized this, who gave me support when I was in the hospital. They knew I was there. They wanted to spell me off sometimes so I could get out for a few hours, run some errands, whatever it took. And they were there for me, Sonia, Nicole, Brent. And of course, the parents came against the odds they were allowed to come. So I'm going to leave you with one comment. Seven grams. Does anybody know what I'm referring to? Seven grams? Human soul. There was a movie made many years ago. It's based on a book. And it's based on some scientific studies that were carried out, I don't know, the first few decades of the 19th century. The studies were involved weighing a person just before they died, after they'd exhaled, but they were still living, and then weighing them after they'd passed, very shortly after they'd passed. Always the, the result was a difference of seven grams. The body would weigh seven grams less, and they could not explain it, except to say, could it be the soul? I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but the studies were repeated with the same result. Like I say, they made a movie out of it, in fact. So I like to think that Julie's soul, as all of our souls, may indeed weigh a mere seven grams, but our spirit, our soul, is actually limitless, as Judy says right now. And she's aware of it. And I think when we're sort of locked into these bodies, we're not quite aware of that spirit that soars beyond our physical limits. We all will be someday, if not already. So Julie's with us. She's very content. She's very busy. She's learning things up there. She's talking to others, guides and that, helping her along. And she's already, or will be soon, planning the next life, what she wants to get accomplished. So with that, I downloaded some dance music, okay? <laughs> and my students and I are going to invite you up on the floor and we're going to do a line dance that Julie used to enjoy doing. In fact, when we'd go out to a, uh, a public dance hall, there'd be a line dance and I'd say to the DJ, can you put on Saturday Night Fever song? i say, yeah, okay. <laughs> so i get up there, the dance students would get up there and would start doing our thing. Pretty soon everybody was joining in. They didn't know how to do the dance, they just sort of pick it up. That's what the line dance is all about. So I'm going to go to that music right now. If you uh, know the movie, Saturday Night Fever, John Travolta, they do a line dance. This is the exact same line dance that he and his friends are doing on the principal dance floor. And then following that, I'm going to play some assorted music. Feel free to get up and move, okay? Just move to the music. I think we have one more speaker, Bill. My father, Kim. Tim. <laughs> I, I know he was waiting for me to remind him. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Throw him under the bus. Tim is a very special figure in Judy's life. How can I? I'm so sorry. I really am. She has known Tim since age nine. Since you were age nine. He'll tell his story in that, but uh, I deeply apologize. I I, not, I lost track of all the speakers that there were. So please, Tim, yes, please share your, your thoughts. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After uh, listening to everybody's stories, I, I'm absolutely amazed at, uh, at uh, we all, we knew Julie at different phases of her life. 
but we all saw the same woman, an amazing, strong, independent, wonderful woman. And uh, I have many thanks to Bill and the Roll family for inviting us here today. It's myself and my son Brandon and his wife. Uh, to share this tribute with you, it is much appreciated. As Bill and others have intimated, uh, the Roll family has always been so open and friendly and, and inviting. And uh, we, we went to many, numerous parties throughout the years and uh, always felt welcome, always felt like part of the family. Well, I always remember our, our many visits to, to, to the home and, and, and <coughs> excuse me, it'll take me a minute here to get myself together uh, with, uh, with fondness. Uh, just to let you know, John introduced me to football back in the early 90s, and it's his fault that I'm a Bills fan. <laughs> <laughs> Many of you are not aware, but I, I am at, amazed at the way, uh, at the speed at which time passes. I've known Julie for over 50 years. Actually, John, it was nine years. Uh, we were nine years old. I'm the same age as Julie. I was nine years old when you guys moved in across the street, and I had an immediate crush on her. Actually, <laughs> I fell in love at the age of nine. <laughs> Seriously, and uh, my mother reminded me last week that uh, when I uh, when I get home from school. I go to the window and wait for Julie to walk by. That school uniform, that was it brown? That brown. Yeah, was, uh, <laughs> like many ten-year-old boys, I would show my affection by being very annoying, right? <laughs> Extremely. Uh, during those childhood interactions with Julie, we, she didn't really say much. Uh, she never actually said anything to me except "Go away." <laughs> so, and I can tell you with certainty that as recently as our last luncheon together this past March, because we did get together uh, often for, for dinner, and uh, I, ne uh, I never lost that superpower to annoy her. <laughs> I, I couldn't, I didn't feel, I, I would never feel complete until I got that patented eye roll. Like, <laughs> Julie and I, this is, uh, I, after you moved away from uh, Dorchester Road, back in, uh, I think I was around 10 then, uh, I didn't see Julie until we were about 18 years old, and uh, she was with her friend Kathy. You mentioned Kathy, so we yeah. were living in an apartment together. And uh, we, we went out dancing a couple times. We met with her and, her, and Kathy, uh, and, and another friend of mine. And then after that, I didn't see her again until she was, we were 28. And I ran into her at a, at a, at a bar in St. Catherine's, Ontario. And uh, we immediately, that, that was it, we were you know, back together again. and. Uh, uh, our boys, uh, we each had a three-year-old boy, Brandon and Sean, and uh, we raised uh, we raised the boys together for 20 years. It was a, it was a great time. It was a, great, it was a good 20 years together. Um, I have so many great memories of our life together, and I'll always, I'll always cherish that per uh, period of our lives. Um, her love of the outdoors, that, that was amazing. Like she, she, uh, she loved going to our cottage, and we used to go camping together. We'd, uh, We'd love to go, go find some remote, remote spot where nobody was, uh, we could be totally alone. And I remember the one time we thought we had found this paradise all by ourselves. So we were kind of sunbathing in the nude. <laughs> we fell asleep and we woke up and there was an entire scout troop walking around. <laughs> <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> luckily there was a pool of water right in front of us so we, we jumped into that. And, Grab their clothes. <laughs> and and to your point about her having claustrophobia, uh, we were, she didn't like, uh, it was very difficult for Julie to get on an airplane. But the larger the airplane, the better it was. Uh, the, the more at ease she could be. Is that uh, mm -hmm. accurate? Larger the, the larger the airplane, the, the easier it was for her to get on. And we were, we were in the Caribbean and we were going from one island to another. I think we were flying to Nevis. And uh, there was a, an eight-seater plane, and I could see the shock look on her face, and I don't know if I can do this. But anyway, we managed to, uh, we had to wait on the tarmac, and made it even worse, we waited for an hour on the tarmac for the, for them to find us a pilot. Oh. And, and so, and, and it was in the heat. So we finally got on the plane, and uh, just shortly after takeoff, amazingly, the, the pilot pulled out a map and handed it to the co-pilot, and he said, where's Mavis? <laughs> so, 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 and amazingly, she didn't get, she didn't freak out at all. She was uh, actually quite at ease. It was me that started to get worried. <laughs> so uh, Julie was my best and dearest friend, and uh, 
She was one pers- the one person in the world I could always confide in uh, in life when things go awry. Um, near the end, she was hesitant. Uh, she was hesitant for, uh, for to let me see her in the condition she was in, and and I thankfully. I, I did. I did get to talk to her on, on the Saturday shortly before her death, and, and it was. Uh, I'm so glad I did. Um, anyway, I told her uh, she would always look, look beautiful to me. She just smiled and shit, and she said, "I know." And that was the last. <laughs> that, those are the last words together. And you told her you'd vote for. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring it up. <laughs> I, I can't vote. I can't vote right in the U.S. I'm a Canadian citizen. However, I did tell her on her deathbed. <laughs> That, just I, that, that, I, that just for you, I hope Donald Trump loses. Well, when I met Julie, she was 15, going on 16. And so I realized at that point, you know, you can't be a mother to a 16-year-old. And she had been really close to her mom. But boy, that girl sparkled. Did she not? And I, I just... She's a beautiful, beautiful girl, and we're going to miss her terribly. She's not here with us, but she is here with us. Um, so I thought it would be nice if, if you want, if you want to come and maybe from the candle here, light a sparkle in her in her honor and take it back to your chair with you. Um, before we do this, I would just like to thank uh, my daughter, Nicole, and her husband, Thomas, and her kids. Her daughter, Felicia, who's upstairs, did the little video. I couldn't have done it without her. These kids are magic on this stuff. Uh, did a wonderful job. But thank you so much for hosting us. It's a, it's a beautiful setting. And to tell you how proud that uh, my husband, John, and I are of our children. Proud of Julie. Proud of Eric. Um, Brent and Sonia. And Nicole were there with Julie when we couldn't be in our set, and believe me, it killed me not to be able to be with her. We don't do that in my family, but we got we got at least our three hours, and um, we're just so proud of all of you, and thank you so much. And I just I'm just gobsmacked by the, the wonderful stories to, to know about Julie. It's just it's wonderful. So thank you all for coming. Uh, this won't be the end. After you dance, there is some peach cobbler with ice cream and some other goodies. So, <laughs> and <laughs> tree, so you know, you're not, you're not leaving until you die. But, um, who would like to sparkle? Julie, you don't want to sparkle. sparkle. <laughs> Put it in that candle that is burning in her memory. Bring that my back. I said to him, I hope he's going to